Log day, 272. Once again, forgive the mess. I'll get this figured out soon enough. One of the things that I've been asked for repeatedly, or at least was a lot in the beginning, was that I would do a Draw Your Life, which for those of you who haven't been around YouTube very long, is kind of this old school way of like sharing your life story while drawing on a whiteboard. I don't have a whiteboard, so I'm gonna use paper. Hopefully I don't regret that too much. This is one of the things I've been wanting to do for a long time that I feel like would be really helpful to bring context like a greater sense of context to the stories I would like to tell and share and the other things that I reference all the time, like the ship. So without further ado, let's get into that. Let's draw your life. By your life, I mean my life. I was born in a small university town in Eastern Washington State, Pullman, Washington. It's just south of Spokane, which is just east of Seattle. And if you don't know where Seattle is, I can't help you. My mom and dad, Sue and Mills, brought me into the world in 1985. Three years later, in 1988, my sister Karin was born, and we soon moved into the house in which we would live through high school. Our cat, Whiskers, was our first pet, named after a less fortunate earlier attempt, and by the time my sister turned 13, she'd convinced my parents to get a dog as well, named Misha. Education was God in Pullman. Considering half of the population was involved in Washington State University, it should come as no surprise. I liked school well enough, and quickly discovered my favorite medium for class projects, video. Ever since our fateful recreation of Jason and the Argonauts on a VHS camcorder, stopping and reshooting over old takes in lieu of real editing capabilities, I was hooked. If video was accepted, it was how I made everything. I studied French for four years and, for some reason, wanted to go there more than anything else. For college, I took a short jaunt north to Cheney, Washington to attend Eastern Washington University for film. I hoped for a lot of hands-on technical experience, but the program focused heavily on writing, something my pride erroneously told me I needed no help with. After getting cussed out by the program's director in the process of asking a routine question, I decided the program was no longer for me, and turned my French minor into a French major. It was during college that I traveled internationally for the first time, but not to France, to Italy. I spent a summer in Siena, but that wouldn't keep me from getting to France as soon as possible. I moved to Nice straight out of college. I taught English conversation courses for 11 hours a week in a technical school, which wound up consisting mostly of games of hangman and mafia. It was during this period that my mom was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's. Thankfully, they were able to visit me in France and I was able to see her. Returning stateside was difficult for a few reasons, but principal among them was the oncoming recession and the slow realization that Spokane in particular simply didn't have the resources I needed to thrive. During this time, I freelanced web and graphic design, worked for a pharmaceutical company packaging drugs, edited school photos in mass, and worked as an enumerator for the Census Bureau until my car got stuck in a massive puddle up an abandoned logging road. Yeah, that story's worth listening to. Needless to say, the work was often unpleasant and money was always tight. I missed meeting people from other parts of the world and using my French. Enter Mercy Ships. About that time, my parents were looking for a change as well and stumbled across Mercy Ships, an organization operating the world's largest charity hospital ship off the coast of West Africa. They give surgery away for free, basically. I looked into it for myself and discovered that they needed a videographer. It seemed perfect. Make videos and speak French while traveling and volunteering to serve the poor. They passed me over. <laughs> but then they said that I could come as the ship's audiovisual technician, and like that, I was off to West Africa. I trained first in Texas, then Haiti, and eventually wound up in Zulu territory in South Africa at an old abandoned teaching college that had been shut down after apartheid. We were the first to inhabit it since. From there we sailed to Sierra Leone where I would experience everything from carrying bodies out of a stampede to eating rat grilled over a barrel fire, not to mention all of the amazing friends I made along the way. Sierra Leone was also where I published my first book, White Shores. My years with Mercy Ships would take me to Ghana, Togo, Benin, the Canaries, France, Switzerland, Guinea, and the Congo, not to mention a mess of places in between. I would become a Royal Diamond Shellback, crash my motorcycle in a herd of goats, be given a title by the BBC, see the ship lifted out of the water, watch pirates burn another ship off the coast, sneak into a couple of countries illegally, and discover the undying love of shawarma that would carry me into my adult years 
which oh, I think I'm I think I'm an adult now. I'd also publish two more books to finish my first trilogy. My time in Paris would introduce me to a place and a way of living that I would never want to leave. A lovely woman whose generosity would ensure I always had a home to come back to, and an Instagram account overflowing with Eiffel Towers. In my final job as media liaison, I worked with everyone from Fox News to the BBC and got to see both the hospital and the Congo from a totally new perspective. I also burned out hard enough to be put on medical leave after five months of 12 to 15 hour days. When I returned to the US from Congo, I took a job training medical professionals on electronic medical records. This job put me on an airplane every three and a half days on average for two years of hotel living and weekend couch surfing. This is how I saw a lot of the US. I flew over 100,000 miles in 2015 alone, domestic, which plays in later as it earned me American Airlines' highest frequent flyer status. During this time, I created Into the Nanton, the world's first real-time fantasy blog, and published two other short novels. I started a tech company with some robotics friends, and together we produced some really cool Bluetooth technology for kids, a bracelet we called Boomerang. I also started hitting the fantasy science fiction convention circuit pretty hard with my good buddy Mike. As the EMR work died down, I found myself in Spokane for a surgery my mom was undergoing without any real plan for what I would do after. I decided to focus my energy into my projects, taking the risk that one of them would pay off. Between the Kickstarter for Into the Nanton, Journal 3, the Kickstarter for Boomerang, and a book deal that I had on the table for a book called Couriers Off-Grade. We even had a trip to Taiwan to meet the manufacturers for Boomerang, which was really cool. Unfortunately, none of these projects came through. 2016 was an adventure in risks and a year of learning how to cope with the after effects of failure. Vlogging saved my life in more ways than one. I started vlogging daily halfway through the year, and in that time was a groomsman in two weddings over two days, three time zones apart. I house sat in the Caribbean, flew drones in San Francisco, and managed to get one of the most exclusive visas available to return to France. I used that fancy status I mentioned earlier to fly with three oversized bags all the way to France for free on the very last day that I could. And here we are, with no real plan, but happy to be back in France, and for a much longer spell this time. I don't know what's coming next, but I'm excited for the adventure, and I hope you'll stick around for it with me. Well, there we go. How'd I do? It wasn't like the full 10 minute draw your life that a lot of people do, but I felt like, like I gave you enough context to raise some questions. And then of course, if you have any questions you can ask, but don't tell any stories from earlier in my life. Please do make sure to like this video. It actually helps a lot if you like the videos and then subscribe if you haven't already. And tomorrow will be a little bit more of a traditional vlog, but I want to do more of these storytelling kind of semi different project style vlogs along the way. So let me know what you think. Um, and uh, let me know if there's anything else that you want to know or would like to see.